Hi, this question comes from Kate Jacobas, who is a lady that sent me the message off the soap making website, and it's a great question. She wants to know what's the definition of an essential oil? Is a mark? Is it a legal term? or is it a marketing term? She says some folks make claims of uh, coconut essential oil that sound like extracts. How do I know if a plant makes an essential oil? It's a great question. And there's lots of different aspects to it. So first of all, let's start with, yeah, essential oil is a legal definition. Um, you may have got the idea that it comes from a marketing term by something that I've said <laughs> that, um, the term therapeutic grade essential oil is a marketing term and uh, that was a mastermind of great proportions of a large uh, essential oil retailer who decided to make it sound like some oils are more suited to therapy than others. In actual fact, no such grading system exists. So I always think it's a bit like um, George Orwell, some animals are more equal than others therapeutic grade essential oil excuse me train therapeutic grade essential oils are more equal than others apparently so yeah so no essential oil is a legal term so to be able to understand the rest of the question we need to clarify what is an essential oil so we know that it's the concentrated essences of plants but why is it there and that's this will help you to understand so it used to be that we used to think that um they um, the chemicals amassed in a plant because it hadn't got an excretory mechanism so that they because you couldn't go to the loo or whatever the plant equivalent would be then it would just gather and there would be more and more and more so when it was a baby plant it wouldn't have many but when it was an older plant it would have lots but actually now we know a bit more and we think that's probably not what it is um more that it's because a plant is rooted in one place and can't move and the plants the mechanisms are to be able to sustain make its life easier and perpetuate its species so it's we know that he doesn't use it at all for any of the primary functions of um their existence so it doesn't need it for respiration more imagine if it's planted in a spot at the top of the himalayas and the sun's be getting down and it's super super hot it can't go anywhere so it has to bake in that heat and likewise when it goes cold it's as cold as it is here this afternoon <laughs> i'm really cold sitting here so um i have to shiver but the plant would make chemicals to be able to adapt to its environment likewise um you might have um caterpillars or beetles or whatever come along and go oh nice dinner and it goes uh no and creates a really horrible tasting um acid so that might be one component um things like roses are beautiful beautiful colors and they um one chemical group phenols is the color it, it creates the colors of the plants and they do that because they need to attract pollinators they need bees to come in and butterflies to land on them and take the pollen to another plant and so to be able to attract them they send out aromatic molecules volatiles into the environment and what's very clever is scientists now know that certain species are attracted to certain chemical components and so they will seek out specifically different plants for that so if you think of um jasmine and honeysuckle they moths um like those so they uh give out more excuse me <clears throat> more fragrance in an evening and then the moon reflects off the white flowers and they can see it and they land and then they take the pollen around so and oh and also we know that sometimes what they do is put chemicals into the ground um, so that would come out of the roots into the ground to stop any other uh, species being able to uh, to germinate there so it's like um, a, a contraceptive in the um, being put out into the ground so not all plants have the same challenges so therefore they have evolved in different ways so for example a lot of grasses 
don't really have these aromatic molecules because they don't need to attract pollinators because the wind sends their seeds but likewise for example something like vetiver really huge huge roots that go deep 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 into the ground and we get the oils from the roots that's where they've built it up so different parts of the plant uh, different parts of different plants um, store the oils so to be able to release the um, oils usually we use a process of distillation and the, the definition of an essential oil is that it has been released by distillation so um, the plant matter is put into the still uh, heat pushed through water comes through steam comes through traps the molecules gets stored above then it's cooled it comes down and then you've got water and oil so imagine then something like frankincense a lot of the uh, molecules will pass through distillation however um, boswellic acid is one that um, doesn't pass through distillation and yet it's a very very healing molecule um, I'm not sure but I think it's too big I think it's too heavy to pass uh, to be able to be lifted by the steam so that doesn't um, pass through so there are healing elements to lots of different plants that don't end up in the essential oil so um, and likewise you might have something like um, orange or lemon or bergamot citrus oils store their um, essentials in the peel so um, distillation is quite um, a costly process it's much easier to just press those out so we call that expression and citrus oils are expressed and although they're not um, distilled they are still classed as an essential oil and likewise things like jasmine that have tiny tiny little flowers that are too uh, delicate to be able to um, distill they are um, solvent extracted or co2 extracted and the, vol uh, the volatiles the secondary metabolites end up in an absolute and while absolutes are not essential oils they are interchangeable in the definition so in answer to your question coconut oil coconut oil is a good example of a nut oil that can be cold pressed and if something's cold pressed no it's not an essential oil it's the wrong usage so these cold pressed ones tend to be things like um, carrier oils so you've got hemp seed oil, um, rosehip squashed out, yeah, um, and things like apricot kernel, peach kernel is the inside nut, and again, cold pressed, and then we have this lovely uh, carrier oil, much less concentrated, so perfectly safe to use on the skin. In answer to your question, how do we know if a plant makes an essential oil? I'm not 100% sure that we do. What I will say is all plants have these secondary metabolites. Not all of them will pass through distillation. Not all of them are aromatic. Um, like, as I say, the um, grasses don't make aromatic ones. Um, and likewise, some of the molecules pass through are hazardous. And so there might be an essential oil, but we don't want to use it. It's not good for us. So to a certain extent we're reliant on what's going to have commercial appeal if it's got a commercial appeal then the chances are it will be made and sold um, so yeah your key um, indicator Kate is to look at the method of, dis uh, of extraction if it's been distilled it's an essential oil if it's an abs uh, absolute we can say it's an essential oil if it's been expressed yeah it's an expression uh, um, an essential oil if it's cold pressed no it's not it's a, a lipid and it's um it's a carrier oil so i hope that has helped you and uh, kate please will you send me your address on the private messenger to, as a thank you for that fantastic question i want to send you a, a copy of my new book uh, which is articles and essays that i've written for public um, for sorry, professional journals over the past couple of years there'll be a few things that you find really really interesting um, 
others you might have read in my other books there is a little overlap even though they're not obviously lifted, uh, lifted the influences past but I think you'll really enjoy it and I just really want to say thank you for your support and thanks for a great question